Hey there. I am jumping in to do a Facebook Live today because I have to admit, I'm really sorry I wasn't here yesterday. I normally do my Facebook Lives on a Wednesday at 12.30, but you know, sometimes life gets in the way. And if you've been following me, you'll know that life has been so super busy at the moment. Business has been going really, really well, but on the downside, I have no money left no money, <laughs> money on the brain, which is why I'm talking to you, but I've got no time left in my week. And so it's been freaking me out. It's been stressing me out. And I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm looking to hire somebody because I just can't keep up. I'm just going to go and share this in the bringing business to retail group, because I know there's a whole bunch of people who hang out in there too. So just give me one second. All right. Uh, so I wanted to, <clears throat> to jump in today and talk about why your business baby is keeping you broke because, oh man, I was out the other day and I heard this person saying, you know, oh, my business is like my baby. And so many people do that, right? So many people say my business is, you know, it's my second baby, my third baby, my fourth baby, whatever baby. And I really want you to stop thinking like that. I, you know, keeping that mentality is actually keeping you broke right? I'm sorry, it's really early in the morning. Sorry, it's 8.30 in the morning. It's not really early, but it's been really, really busy. So I've got my cup of tea here and I, I'm just going to sit down and have a little chat with you. So if you've got any questions, please jump in and let's talk about money and, you know, and why your business baby is keeping you broke. So why do I say that your business baby is keeping you broke? Well, the first thing is think about if you've got kids, think about your kids, right? You buy them stuff because you love them. You buy them stuff that they don't need. You know, obviously we, we, we look after them, but we also buy them, you know, we buy them treats, we buy them presents, we buy them surprises, all these things that we buy because it makes us you know, feel good to actually give. And that's not a bad thing. You know, we're people and we love to give. You know, that's usually where the fun is in, in Christmas and presents is it's not actually receiving well, receiving fun especially if you're a kid but it's about the you know the act of giving and the act of feeling like you know you you've made a lot of effort and you've put you know, your heart and soul into this gift and you want to see how the other person reacts that is good that is why we're human but your business is not a child right your business is being designed to make you money if you have not worked that out yet, you should not be in business. I've just got a few notes here because I've been thinking about it over the couple of days. And I was like, right, so what do we, you know, why do we have this fixation that it's a baby? Is it because we invest so much time and so much money into it? Is it, you know, is that the one reason? Is it because we, we feel so connected to it that we, you know, it is like a baby? Well, you know, you have to think about, successful businesses like let's pull out you know everyone loves Richard Branson so let's pull out Richard Branson and say is he so 100% connected to his business that he would call it his baby no <laughs> you know he do you, I don't know if you ever read the the story about how he got started but he was selling bootleg records and I don't think that you would do that to your child you wouldn't go and you know kidnap a child and sell it so we really need to stop thinking about business as a baby. If you have ever said that, I want you to stop thinking about it right now. I want you to stop saying it. I want you to say, you know, this is my business and it's what I do with money, what I do to have freedom. I have financial freedom and I have personal freedom. Now, you may not have those things right now. Like you may may not have either the, the financial freedom or the, fr the personal freedom, or maybe you've got one and not the other. You can work the hours that you want, but maybe it's not making you, the, you know, as much money as you want right now. Maybe it's making you money and you are spending a lot of time in your business, like spending all of your time in your business, in which case your business quite isn't quite living up to it, right? It isn't quite living up to what you designed it to do. That's okay. We don't get we don't get to the end point first. We don't get to a successful business without putting in the hard yards. That's okay. If you have personal or financial freedom or none or both, I'm okay with that. But if you always say that your business is your baby, I don't think you will ever get to the point where you make really good money out of it. And you know, we have to kind of make the good money because that's what gives us the freedom. <laughs> if, you don't have, if you don't have the money, you can't hire people. 
And hiring people is generally the easiest way to get the personal freedom. So you don't have to work in your business all the time. And you know, you need money to do that. So personal freedom doesn't always come as a direct result of money. Like that is something that you can choose to do. Like it's one of the things that I've chosen to do in this quest for a new, a new hire. I know that I'm really, really busy. And my husband just said to me recently, well, you know, you could just go and sit at your desk from seven in the morning till seven at night for five days a week. And you probably get over this. You probably get, you know, three weeks will probably catch you up and put you ahead and, and you probably be okay for a while. And I was like, right, but I didn't do this. <laughs> I didn't put the blood, sweat and tears to get it into here to have to do that. I am at that point now where it is time to you know, let somebody else take over a big portion of the business so that I can continue to have my personal and financial freedom. I have never, ever in this business called it my baby. Now, I probably did in my last business, but that it, when I had my store, I probably did start off by saying that. But there was a point where I know that I, I changed and I never said that again because I kind of worked out that the baby thing is not a really good analogy. The baby thing means that I'm, I'm coddling it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it too much. I'm, <laughs> and you know, we do that with our kids, right? We, we don't have any expectations for them. We don't, we don't mind if they, you know, it might make us cranky, but we're not going to disown them if they don't get the best, you know, the best report card or if they, um, you know, smack somebody in the playground, all those kinds of things. If they don't do our exact version of perfect, we still love them. We still, <laughs> we still won't just give them away. But a business is different, right? A business has been designed to give you those two things, the personal and financial freedom. And it, if, it, if it is not living up to those two things, then why are we doing it or what are we doing wrong? And that's not, you know, that, that's not to, to go and put a slight on anybody here. If your business is not making money and you call it your baby, then there's probably a bunch of things that are and not working, right? You know, if your business is not making money, you, maybe it's you've just started, maybe you're doing no advertising. And this was something that I brought up, um, I think when I was recording the podcast yesterday, I can't even think at the moment when it was. I was, on, I was on a couple of podcasts this week, so I can't remember the stories I've told you guys and the stories that I've told everybody else. So if I'm repeating this, just go with it. But I said to her, um, see, now I can't even think where I was going with that story. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway. Um, I've been really busy and clearly it is affecting my brain. Oh, where were we? We were talking, I've just written some notes here about, um, you know, really not, this is why I've even got notes, right? I don't usually have notes when I do Facebook lives. That's how bad my, my brain is working. I need a cup of tea and I need notes. We're talking about butt kicking and staying on track, right? So when your kid does something that's not perfect, it's okay. You, you, maybe you chastise them. Maybe you, they, they, they get told off. But in business, if your business is failing, do you do that? Because I reckon if you call your business your baby, you probably do. You chalk it up to, um, you know, if, you, if your marketing didn't work, you'll be like, oh, that was just a brand awareness campaign. I am telling you now that if, unless you are Nike, unless you are Coke, unless you are, you know, anthropology, you can't afford a brand awareness campaign. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here is, here's the, the, the thing. You can't afford a brand awareness campaign. You can afford to run a campaign that leads to sales. Now that may encompass brand awareness along the way, but you need to know what the goal is. And the goal is not to just get your name out there unless you've got a plan to, to use that. And in fact, I did that podcast this week, not where I was going with the original conversation, but I did a podcast this week with Annette from Publicity Genie and she said the exact opposite. So if you go and listen to that and then you're listening to this and you're like, Sal, you just told me it's not about brand awareness. They are two different marketing campaigns, right? And Annette tells you how to work out your goals for that. So have your goals and know whether your business is meeting them because too many people don't have any goals for their business. They just go, I need to make some money. They just go, I need more customers. I need more sales. And there's no plan on how to get there. There's no, you know, there's no measure of return on investment. Hi, Neely. Uh, there's no, there's no, re keeping the, keeping the business accountable, right? It's like the kid, keep the kid accountable. If your kid gets homework 
Do you make sure it gets done? Yes. Do you hassle them? If you are anything like me, we have to do it in the morning before my daughter goes to before school care. And sometimes there are fights about it. I hate homework. Homework is more about the parents than the kids and it is so stressful. But we do it, right? We do it because we want the best for our kids. But how many people are doing that to their business? Like how many people are you know, looking at the numbers, looking at their marketing campaigns, looking at their goals and then keeping their business accountable? Not a lot. And the people who are calling their business their baby are using excuses to let their business get away from it, get away with it. And that is not what we're doing this for. Like I'm going to repeat myself a few times here. This is not why we're in business. Like, you know, comment in the chat, why are you in business? And I bet you it is, you know, to make money, to have the flexibility, to spend more time with my family. Uh, maybe it's to achieve something great. Maybe it's to, you know, to give back to the community. Those, that fulfillment that we need to go with it. And if your business is not living up to that, then why are you doing it? <laughs> Okay, that's a bit harsh, but if your business is not living up to that, is it because you haven't taken responsibility? Are you not being the business owner? And usually the answer to that is yes. And is it because you're acting more like a parent in your business, which is, you know, you're holding it accountable, but letting it get away with stuff because we're human and because we love that baby. We can't do that in business. You know, if you are letting things slide in your business, then it is costing you money and it's going to take you so much longer to get to that end point. It's going to take you so much longer to get to that point where freedom is. And that's just going to change along the way, right? That's going to be different in six months than it is going to be in six years, hoping that your business is still around in six years. And can you see now why I think if you call it your baby, it's, it's actually keeping you broke? It's because the biggest thing is the accountability and the responsibility and those two things aren't the same so responsibility is your you know it is up to you to make sure those things are done but the accountability is actually checking in to make sure that it's done so some people are responsible and they're like i've done all those things i've done my marketing campaign i've done this but then they don't check back they don't have that accountability and that's one of the things that i find i get out of mentoring is well as I get as a personal thing but I also have my own mentor like I, I I pay to be in a mastermind and that is one of the things that does make you realize that if you don't have somebody to check in with if you don't have somebody who's there to kind of kick your butt every now and then to keep you accountable because it's really hard to do ourselves especially if you if you work from home or if you work in your business by yourself that is a really hard thing to do to keep yourself accountable so um, that accountability that comes with being in a mentor I'm just writing sitting down to see what else <laughs> I've written here about mentoring accountability butt kicking oh yes don't I love that my coach is forever <laughs> hassling me about not getting stuff done but also just advice um, I love that in a group like that in, in, in my pay group and you don't have to be in a pay group for this right you can have this in you know a small group that you put together yourself I really don't recommend doing it in some generic Facebook group though because those people don't have your best interests at heart they don't know how your business runs so if you're going to do this mentoring thing on your own put together a little small group where you you jump in and you meet together once a week and you hold yourselves accountable but if you think that you know you may be doing all those things and the money's still not coming like if you've been following me at all this week, you'll know that I have been um, talk, talking to you all about Denise Duffield Thomas, Thomas's Money Bootcamp. I have followed Denise's teachings for a long time. And just before this actually came live, it was like the day before I got the email to say, you know, hey, we would love to partner with you to talk, you know, to show your money bootcamp. I've been talking about it for ages anyway. I was like, right, I was at that pay space, what was it, about two weeks ago now, and I was like, I need to make the space for this new person. So I started decluttering the office. I'm not finished, right? <laughs> if you've been following me, it's two weeks now. I'm not finished. My shredding pile, just my shredding pile alone, is two massive boxes. So I've managed to get through half a box. And that is more because my shredder, you know, you can only use it for a couple of minutes. But the point is, I started doing this work, and then I... I got the, the, the email the next day to say, you know, hey, come and be a partner for the, the money boot camp. And I was like, wow, that's like really perfect timing. I was kind of in that space anyway. I, I'd started to read Denise's book again and I was just, you know, going through the steps. And when I, one of the things she makes you do is you have to track the money that you receive. And 
I actually had had my best month ever in July and, and hadn't really noticed it because I'd been so busy. And over the, like this last week, I've sort of tracked money. And you, if you, you know, if you follow any of these things, you would have heard me talk about my, my $2,000 worth of bookings that I, I received for the holiday house and my free bus ticket and my free parking and all these kinds of things. But there's also been all these little bits of money that I guess you, not that you don't necessarily accept, but that you kind of dismiss when they come in. So a refund that I got was only like $5, but it came in. And then I've had a few sales of an ebook that I do, which is $20. And I haven't even been promoting that. And so these little PayPal messages and Stripe messages have been coming in saying, you know, here's $5, here's $20. And I was like, wow, that's, <laughs> where, where did this come from? Because I, haven't been promoting these things you know I, all I've really been doing is I've been talking about Denise's money boot camp and that's it and that's only just been in these last few days the whole of last month we did no advertising none which is terrible that is so bad like I don't recommend it at all and it wasn't anybody's fault that we didn't do any advertising it was just quite simply that I'd made this decision to change out my um, I have a really really popular download and it was just one page and it was really quite crap and it was great for when I first started out. But now that the brand is, you know, it's advancing a little bit, I thought, you know what, I kind of have to give a little bit more for this. So I put some examples in and my graphic designer added some photos in, you know, some illustrations in and we made it into about a, a six or seven page ebook. Now it still has the same information. It just has a little bit more information because I feel that that information will be helpful to you. It's not, it's not fluff. It's actually like, here's, here's the strategies and here's how we use them to make some money. And that's taken a month <laughs> to get updated, not because of the graphic designer, not because of the assistant, but simply because of me, because I have been so busy, she would send it back to me. Um, I would be like, right, I have to proof the typos because I'm terrible at sending typos. <laughs> and in this latest job description, there are three typos because nobody proofed it. So, you know, it's been sitting with me to, to get these things going back and all of the background stuff is set up. So all of the Facebook ads are set up, the, you know, the thank you page, the download, all that stuff set up. So I literally could just upload. In fact, I don't even have to upload it myself. I just give it to my assistant and I say, you know, can you upload this, replace out the, the one we had and replace it with this. And then I can just turn the ads on, but I haven't done that. And that is my fault. You know, that's nobody else's fault. That is my fault. I take full responsibility. And I know that it, we will suffer in the long run because turning off your advertising for a whole month is no lead generation for probably three or four months down the track, which, which, doesn't sound right. You think you turn it off for a month, it, you just don't get leads for a month, but that's not how it works. And the same is with you, with your customers, right? If you just don't advertise, if you just don't make any effort for a month, I can guarantee you that it's not about um, not getting customers for that month. That I can tell you from stats that that will flow on and on. So the weird thing is this money has been appearing seamlessly out of the blue, but I feel like it's kind of the universe telling me, I know this is all woo-woo, right? This is just woo-woo stuff, but I feel like it's the universe saying to me, you know what, Sal, you are right. You have wanted this extra person in your business since you first started. <laughs> and it's never been the right time. It just hasn't, you know, for whatever reason, it hasn't been the right time. And now that it's the right time, and maybe the right person is going to slip by. Now that's happened now three times in the last week. I'm not joking, three times. So my first choice, uh, couldn't take it on because she had too much work. My second choice, who is someone I so deeply admire and respect and was very surprised when they applied for the job, can't start straight away. I need someone who can start straight away. And then my third choice, who you know, very quickly became my, up to my first choice because the first two had gone, had way too much experience you know I said to her this is this is a you know this is a downgrade from where you've been you know high flying she had been the founder of many festivals and so we sort of chatted and as much as I really really wanted to come on board I knew this would happen like sometimes you just know right I knew this would happen she sent me an email that night and she said I would so love to work for you but you were right you kind of talked me out of it which is wrong for me but this is how I do business 
she said, you're right, I, I need to be doing something for myself. And she did. You know, I think working with me would have been, been great for her and I think it would have been awesome for me. But at the end of the day, I still think there would have been that fire inside of her that, that would have said, you know, I need to be doing something for myself because I've done this for myself for the last 20 years. So I'm not about, this is responsibility, right? This is the difference between the parent and the business owner. And I guess there's a little bit of parenting in there too, because I was like, I want what's best for you. But if we're being selfish and being the business owner, it was all about me, right? Is if I brought this person on and it's six months down the track, she'd done some amazing stuff, but she'd always had that hankering to go and do something for herself. Then my business suffers. Like, yes, she can help me for six months. I don't want someone for six months. I've never had someone in my business for six months. That would drive me insane. I want people who will come along for the journey. I want people who are going to stick around for the next few years. And so with that, like I knew that, just knew that during the conversation, even though we both left that conversation so fantastically excited, I was going to get that email. <laughs> so the, the right person still hasn't shown up, but I'm okay with that. I am really good with that because in the process, I feel like I'm getting all these little dribs and drabs of money that says, okay, Sal, you are freaking out about how you're going to afford, afford this person. You know, it's thousands of dollars, uh, you know, potentially thousands of dollars a month. So I've been freaking out and not, not a lot, but it's, it has been sitting in the back of my mind. And I feel like it is the universe that's just kind of going, you know, here's $5, here's $20, <laughs> here's a little bit here, here's a bit there. It's okay. It's still coming in. You haven't, you know, you haven't done any advertising. It's okay. We're good. Just a couple of dollars here. I'm just reminding you that there's money out there to be made in, in some way, shape or form. Now, I'm not saying that it's raining money. And I'm certainly not saying that when you, you know, when you do this kind of stuff with Denise, that money just rains out of the sky, you do have to take action, right? So I did take action. I did, you know, all those programs were in place to be sold. There are things that run in the background to, to send you to them. So people didn't just Google, you know, give me an ebook from Selena. They, they were working through a funnel to get there. So you still have to take action when you do this stuff. But I love the fact that you can have some accountability as well, because in this new money boot camp, this has never been done before. You actually have these, um, I think they're called facilitators, but you know, these people who have done it before, people who have worked on mindset to give you advice, to guide you along the way. It's what I do with my rock stars. And I, I, I'm sort of just saying this now, this whole thing is not about the money boot camp, but it does close in, it's like two hours and there's this chance to save $500. So that goes away in about two hours. A little bit more than two hours and I also have a special bonus that is going out with that to uh, the first three people actually because we've the first there was five and now there are three uh, first three people or the next three people who join up to Denise's money boot camp and get the $500 saving will also get one month in my boutique rockstars program so this is not um, I, the only reason it's five is there's no more space than that so they'll get a, a month into the Boutique Rockstars program, which is actually worth a thousand US dollars. So that is a lot of money, right? But the reason I'm doing this is because I, I want to help you. Like I want you to have that guidance that you'll be getting when it comes to money. And it is really overwhelming when you do this stuff, right? You, <laughs> you go through a lot on a personal level in terms of, you know, forgiveness and the whole, you know, you do physical stuff and you do mental stuff. And having someone to guide you along the way is fantastic. But I also want to be there when you've done that. Like I want you to go, right, okay, I've been through that. So now what actions do I need to take? What, what's the next step <laughs> to make sure that this can continue? Because to take action, you need to have a plan and you need to have that guidance and that advice and, you know, that butt kicking, all that stuff we've been, we've been talking about. So if you, you know, if you want to go and, and do that, I'll, I'll pop the link in a minute into the, into the show notes. But all of this comes back to that accountability and responsibility that, oh, bash the computer in the process that we take on as business owners. And if we stay in this mentality of the business is my baby, I honestly believe that you won't make money. I think that that is probably one of the mindset things that, hey, that's, <laughs> I didn't really plan that. As I said, it's all very off the cuff, apart from my, my four things I've written down to talk about. Um, 
you know, it is really a mindset thing that I think is holding you back. And that, that's something that Denise is going to teach you if you do the money boot camp. And by just even simply taking that concept online or e-commerce store, and I sell this and it's fantastic. It's a great business. You know, I do this to have personal, to, you know, to get to myself to a point where I have personal and financial freedom. You do it in your words, but I want you to say that, that out loud. I want you to say that this is my business and I want people, I want you to tell people that, you know, why you do it. And maybe it's to give back. Maybe it's so that you feel fulfilled, but it's also to make you money, right? So chuck those words in. You can use my words, personal and financial freedom. You can use your own words, but just do not say to people that my business is my baby or even it's like my baby. It's my fourth baby, whatever, because doing that is going to keep you in this mentality that you can let things slide, that you can let your business get away with underperforming. You know, <laughs> I don't care how great your kids are or how not so great your kids are. It is our job as a parent to be supportive to them. It is not our job to be supportive of our business. It is our job of our business to be supportive of us. Two completely different things. Don't get them backwards because getting them backwards is stopping you from earning money and it is stopping you from moving forward. You know, a lot of times we need money to move forward, right? So, oh, there we go. That was a really long Facebook Live, nearly half an hour. I'm sorry. I was just jumping on to talk about how your business is keeping you broke. But I, you know, if you have any questions about this, if, you know, hands up if you've called your business your baby because been there, done that. But like I said, there is a point where you have to just move on out and say, no, this is my business. It's designed to make me money. And you know, even social enterprises are designed to make money, whether it's for you or you give that money back to somebody else, it's still designed to make money. And you know, not-for-profits have a goal as well, but I'm just rambling now and you guys have stayed with me for a very long time. So I'm going to jump off and say thank you so much for being with me today. It was a, a little bit of a challenge for me to get my head around <laughs> and taking half an hour out of a very busy day. And if you, as I said, if you want to have a look at Denise's Money Bootcamp, I'll pop a link into that in a minute. And I really hope that even if, you know, I, I don't mind if you do Denise's Bootcamp or if you, you know, come and work with me, whatever. I just hope that these, the information that I give you here on the page actually makes a change in your business and makes a change in your day. Like I hope it, it's made you smile and made you have a think. So with that, I will say goodbye and have a fantastic Thursday. Bye.